Welcome to the Picture Language Seminar. This is our last regular session before summer break. And we're very happy to have Kaifeng Bu. Kaifeng is a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University and has written many interesting papers about magic. And he's going to tell us today about some of that work. So Kaifeng, it's a great pleasure to introduce you and I look forward to your talk. Okay, <clears throat> thank us for the introduction. Now let me um, share my screen. So <clears throat> can I see my screen? Yes, works perfectly. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So today I'm very glad to introduce our recent work on magic from a quantum convolutional approach. This talk is based on some joint work with Wei Chen Gu from New Hampshire and also Arthur. <clears throat> Here are the two reference. Um, I will post it on archive uh, two months ago. And uh, in today's talk, <clears throat> I will introduce a new quantum convolution um, Uncoded systems to st so study stabilizer states and the magic states, and also use this new convolution to, est to establish a quantum central limit, limit theorem. <clears throat> so let us start first start from some um, uh, basic concepts in uh, quantum information and computation. So let us start from the stabilizer. states. <clears throat> Stabilizer states play a very important role in quantum information and computation. It has lots of applications, such as uh, quantum error correction code and also measurement-based quantum computation. Uh, and uh, to talk about the stabilizer states, we first need to uh, introduce some basic concepts called poly operators. And here we consider the uncoded system poly operators. So one coded means so one coded system means we have a, a finite dimensional here of the space H and the dimension of H is equal to D. And the uncoded system means we do the intense product of the finite dimensional here of the space H. <clears throat> And then the poly operators, the, po the poly operators on NQD systems are defined by two simple elements, poly X and poly Z. So let us first consider single QD to poly. <clears throat> so the single QD poly operators has two basic elements, poly X, and the poly Z. So the poly X will map computational basis Z to Z plus one. <clears throat> and the poly Z will map the, the computational basis Z uh, to Z itself, but with some additional phase omega D to the power of Z. So here, Omega D is some this root of unity. <clears throat> and the set of Z is an orthonormal basis. <clears throat> so all the single Q the poly operators can be written as the product of poly X and poly Z. So A and B from C or D. <clears throat> so this is the definition of single coded poly operators. And the, the uncoded poly operators is, the, uh, is just defined as the tensor product of the single coded poly. <clears throat> 
And uh, here for simplicity, uh, we denote it as x to the power of vector a and z to the power of vector b. And the vector a is a1 to an, vector b is the b1 to bn. <clears throat> and uh, we denote the set <clears throat> of all NQD poly operators as pn. So this is the definition of poly operators. Now, in the set of NQD poly operators, we can find some uh, abelian subgroup G of poly operators, uh, which has N generators, G1 to Gn. So which means um, each GI is the poly operators and the GI, GZ are commuting with each other. So because they are commuting with each other, then we can find the common eigenstate of all the GI uh, corresponding to the plus one eigenstate. <clears throat> So the state of a psi is just defined as the, the common eigenstate for each generator's GI uh, corresponding to the plus one eigenvalue. So this mm -mm, psi is called a stabilized state or pure stabilizer state. So then the definition of pure Stabilizer state is just defined as some common eigen states of some uh, <clears throat> abelian subgroup of uh, poly operators. So, which means if you don't, if you have different subgroup, uh, abelian subgroup of poly operators, it is corresponding to a different stabilizer state. And uh, this is the uh, Dirac notation, the Psi. The Psi is just the, the, uh, a vector in the Hilbert space with a unit norm. And uh, we can write the density matrix, density matrix of this pure state. So for, <clears throat> for the stabilized states, we can write it as uh, the product of the Summation ki from z mod d g i to the power of ki. <clears throat> so this one, the summation of g i to the power of ki is the projection to, to the eigenspace of g i corresponding to the plus one <clears throat> eigenvalue. So if you time the, uh, multiply them together, it will become projection to the uh, uh, the pure stabilizer state per se, which is the common eigen state of all the generators, uh, all the generators. <clears throat> okay, um, now let me give a simple example of this pure stabilizer state. Let us consider n equal to two, d equal to two case, which means the two qubit system. And then now, in the two qubit system, we consider the bell state. So the bell state is defined as the uniform superposition of zero, zero plus one what? <clears throat> this is also known as cat state or maximally entangled state for two qubit system. Um, the bell state has a lot of applications. Um, the widely or the well known application is the teleportation and also the super dense folding. And because of its wide application and its importance uh, in physics, the last year's Nobel Prize in physics was given to the experimental realization or experimental verification of bail inequality. And uh, here, the bail state, uh, the two qubit uh, bail state, 
it's an it's a stabilized state. <clears throat> the corresponding abelian subgroup of poly operators is generated by x times x and z times z. So it's very easy to verify. So x times x is commuting with z times z. And uh, when the action um, of x times x and z times z um, bail state will keep it fixed. <clears throat> and now this is the definition of pure stabilizer states. But how about a state uh, is a mixed state? So now let us general, uh, give a more general definition of stabilizer state. <clears throat> we call it a minimal stabilizer projection state. And uh, we use MSPS, MSPS for short. <clears throat> so we we'll still consider a, a billion subgroup G, <clears throat> but now it has R generators. Well, R is still an integer, but it's less than equal to N. Now this abelian group of poly operators is also corresponding to a state. We use this, we use this formula, but change N to R. So it's easy to see uh, when R is strictly less than N, then the corresponding state low is a mixed state. And uh, this state we call the MSPS. And uh, of course, the pure stabilizer state is a subset of the set of MSPS. Okay. And along with the stabilizer state, there's another important family of unitary called the uh, Cleave for the unitary. So cleave for the unitary is defined as the all the unitaries, which will map the poly operators to poly operators. So based on this property, it's easy to see that cleave for the unitary will map the stabilized state to stabilized state, which means uh, the set of stabilized states is. Uh, it's invalid under the action of Clifford uh, unitary. So Clifford <clears throat> unitary will map stabilizer state to stabilized state. Okay, why do we care about uh, the stabilizer states and the Clifford unitary? Um, because there's a well-known theorem in quantum computation called the Goldisman Canoe theorem. So it tells us that if the, the quantum circuit has stabilizer state as the input state, and the, all the quantum gates in the circuit are Clifford unitaries. And uh, we do the measurement in the computational basis. So we we'll get some output probability distribution. The goldman kernel theorem tells us that the, for this kind of quantum circuit, the output probability can be computed on a classical computer. in polynomial time. So if something can be done um, efficiently on a classical computer, then there's no quantum advantage. We don't need a quantum computer to do it. We just uh, use classical computer to do it. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a, a very amazing result because uh, 
this is this kind of quantum circuits because Bell state is a, a example of uh, uh, stabilizer states. So which means this kind of quantum circuits could have very large amount of entanglement, but even though it's it still can be simulated efficiently on a classical computer. Okay, so the gaussian kernel theorem does this kind of circuit has no quantum computational advantage. So to get a quantum, which means if we want to have quantum ad computational advantage, then we need some state states outside of the stabilizer states. So, <clears throat> which means this is the set of all quantum states. And this is set of stabilizer states. So, which means we need uh, the state outside of stabilizer states. We need a non stabilizer states. And in the literature, we usually call the non-stabilizer states as the magic states. <clears throat> okay, so, so the states out of, outside of the stabilized states is called, uh, are called the magic states. So let, now let me give a simple example, a simple but widely used example of magic state called T state. So the T state is very simple. It's just a uniform superposition of zero and a one, but with some additional phase e to the i pi over four. And the, this state can be written as the, the action of T on the plus state. So plus is the uniform superposition of zero and one, which is the eigenstate of poly X. And the T is the single qubit diagonal gate with one and the e to the i pi four on the diagonal. <clears throat> So why do we care about this magic state, magic T state or magic uh, T gate? Because if we only have polyphony unitary, we cannot do universal quantum computation. So uni universal quantum computation means uh, we can approximate any n qubit unitary to any precision as you want. But if we have polyphony plus T, then we can do it. So we can use Clifford's plus T to realize universal quantum computation, but without the T, we only if we, we only have Clifford unitary, we cannot do that. And uh, there's a, a way to use Clifford uh, to use the magic T state and the clip for the unitary plus some poly measurement. Then we can realize the T gate. <clears throat> this process, uh, this protocol is called a magic state injection. Okay, so the T state is a, a simple example of uh, magic state, but it's a, it's a very widely used in the quantum computation, especially in quantum mechanical code. But there are more than one magic state. For example, if I have magic state one, and then you have magic state two. So you may ask, which magic state is more difficult to simulate on a classical computer, which means we want to quantify the amount of magic in the states or to quantify the distance between the set of stabilized state to the given 
magic state. So how could we, could we do that? So here, let us introduce the second concept called a quantum Fourier transform. <clears throat> so record P is the set of all NQD poly operators. And this set of poly op operators is in fact an also normal basis for the set of all linear operators on NQD system with respect to the inner product defined by normalized trees. <clears throat> um, this means we can uh, rewrite any linear operators in the basis of poly operators. And the coefficients in this expression is called a characteristic function. So the characteristic uh, function of a given state low is just defined as the inner product between the low and the poly operators. So we can rewrite the given state low as the linear combination of poly operators with the coefficients being the characteristic function. <clears throat> okay, and here we take this process We take the process of taking the characteristic function as the quantum Fourier transform. <clears throat> this is a this is different from the quantum Fourier transform we usually use in quantum computation, especially in quantum algorithms such as short algorithm. Uh, here we take the process of taking the characteristic function as the uh, quantum Fourier transform. Why do we call this uh, quantum Fourier transform? Because when it is it is reduced to the reduced to the classical case, then it will become the traditional Fourier transform on the function from C D times N to C to the Fourier transform. Yeah, when this uh, uh, quantum Fourier transform reduced uh, to the classical case, it will it is just the classical Fourier transform on the functions on um, C D times N. So based on this idea, uh, people uh, let me give some reference. People use this idea to consider the N cube the case, and they call it a quantum Boolean function. This is by um, Um, narrow and uh, Osman. They use this quantum, they do the fully analysis of the quantum Boolean function, use this quantum Fourier transform. And also in our group, we also use this uh, quantum Fourier transform the characteristic function to study uh, quantum chaos, especially scrambling. And we define the resource theory of scrambling.
Okay, so these are two references um, uh, which study the, uh, the quantum information or quantum uh, chaos based on this uh, characteristic function. And now with this uh, characteristic function, we are able to define our quantum Fourier transform, uh, our quantum convolution. <clears throat> So now that, now that has a consider quantum convolution on NQD system. <clears throat> this is by our work this year. Okay, so in our work, uh, in our paper, we give a very general definition of the form of quantum convolution on NQD system. But here, uh, let me use one example to um, explain the main ideas and the main results in our works. And the, the, the corresponding quantum convolution is called a, a discrete beam split. So um, let us start from the simple case. Let us first consider the two qubit case. Now we define two qubit unitary <clears throat> U S T, and the S T are two parameters from Z mod D, and we require S plus S square plus T square C equivalent to one mod D. And then the UST is just defined as the unitary which map the computational basis i tends to z to si plus tj tends to ti minus sg. So this is a definition of a of two QDT unitary. <clears throat> now let us general realize it to two encoded case. Oh. Sorry. So let us consider the two encoded unitary, uh, which is defined as the intense product of this uh, two encoded unitary which means we apply the two QD unitary on the first and then plus one QD first. And then we apply the same unitary on the second and then plus two QD. And then we keep doing until to the N and the two N QD. <clears throat> okay, so for simplicity, we know this big unitary as VST. Now we are ready to define our quantum convolution. So the quantum convolution of two unqubit state is defined as following. First, a tensor uh, sorry for the interruption. First, we tensor row and the sigma together, and then we apply this big unitary conjugately. Now the state is an, it's a two unqubit state, but we want the output state to be an unqubit state. So we take the partial trace on the second unqubit system, so take the partial trace on the second NQD system means we take the partial trace on the N plus one QD first, and then we take partial trace on plus two, and so on and so on. Okay, so this is our 
definition of quantum convolution and the, the and the why this is a definition is a good definition. Uh, why this uh, uh, our definition of quantum convolution is a good uh, definition of convolution on NKD system. Okay, to talk about that, let us first recall the classical case. So in classical case, like in undergraduate probability theory uh, course, um, assuming you have some random variable. <clears throat> and the value of this, uh, the expectation value of the random variable is mu, for example. Oh, let us keep, keep it simple. And let us assume the expectation value is zero and the variance is sigma. Okay, <clears throat> and the fx is the corresponding uh, probability probability density function. Okay, similarly, we have another random variable and with the same uh, condition and the fy is the corresponding probability density function. Now, let us to consider the another random variable, Z, which is defined as X plus one, X plus Y uh, divided by square root of two. And then if you compute the, the corresponding probability density function of Z, you will find that it is equal to the, the convolution of fx and fy on the square root of t case. <clears throat> oh, let me use a here, because I need to use another. <clears throat> okay, and now we can also define the characteristic function. For any random variable x, um, T, which is defined as the Fourier transform of the probability density function. And now we will find that the, this convolution has many good properties. First, the Fourier transform Under the Fourier transform, it will become a multiplication. So here the Fourier transform is the characteristic function. So we find that after the convolution, the characteristic function of the convolution will become the, the multiplication of the corresponding uh, characteristic function of X and Y. And uh, if X and Y are both Gaussian, then C is also Gaussian. So which means the, the classical convolution of Gaussian distribution is still Gaussian. <clears throat> One, two, three. And uh, if we, Keep doing the convolution again and again. So, for example, we uh, consider the nth convolution x1 to x, x plus x oh, to, to xn, and each xi are ID random variables. Then it will, in many situations, it will convert to the Gaussian distribution. This is the classical central limit theorem. And then if we denote Zn as the nth normalized convolution, so we find that the, the classical entropy of this Zn has some property of monotonicity on the convolution, which means the entropy 
once you have more convolution, the entropy is non-decreasing. Oh, this result uh, is first proved by Lee in 1987 for some simple, uh, for some uh, case like uh, uh, proof n equal to two to the power of n case. <clears throat> and the later it was proved by, uh, the, the final uh, uh, result was proved by uh, Let's see, uh, let me find a little bit. Um, finally, the Noah and uh, his collaborators in James in 2004. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now, if we want to show our definition of counter convolution, it's a good definition. So we are trying to verify these four properties uh, one by one. So the so first one, let's consider the characteristic function. First, I have considered the, the behavior of characteristic function on the quantum convolution. So then we find that the characteristic function of the convolution can be written as the characteristic function of low um, S A S B times chi sigma T A T A. Okay, so because we are taking the process of taking characteristic function as the quantum Fourier transform. Um, so this uh, property tells us that the quantum Fourier transform will map the quantum convolution to multiplication. So the second one, um, so here we consider the sigma low and the sigma uh, quantum Gaussian. So if low, both low and sigma are stabilized states, then the convolution is still stabilized state. So this is similar to the classical case. The convolution of Gaussian is still Gaussian. Here we prove that the convolution of stabilized states is still a stabilized state. <clears throat> now let us, still, let us also consider, uh, let us also, uh, and given the same state, let us repeat the convolution again and again. <clears throat> let us denote this, uh, let us assume we have n convolution. So we denote it as n convolution of low. Then if we repeat the convolution again and again, which means that the number of, of convolution n goes to infinity, it will map to some stabilized state. So, so if, which means like if we repeat the convolution again and again, and it will then converge to a stabilized state. So just like the classical case, uh, if we repeat the convolution again and again, the output probability distribution will converge to a Gaussian distribution. But here we found that the, the output state will converge to a stabilized state. So this is problem three, the quantum central mean the zero. What corresponds to mean zero? Oh, good. Yeah, I will mention this later. Yeah. Okay, here we only show like, um, uh, this is the informal version, let me see. <clears throat> because I haven't tell you, like uh, there are two basic questions, Um, so, What's the limit? Low stabilize the stabilized state, and also what's the rate of convergence?
<clears throat> right? So uh, in the probability three, I only show that uh, it will converge to a stabilized state, but I haven't seen uh, what kind of stabilized state it will converge to, and what's the rate of convergence in the quantum central limit theory, what kind of things will determine the rate of the speed of convergence? Okay, to talk about these two problems, let us first introduce a concept called mean state. So remember, any quantum state can be written as the linear combination of poly operators with the coefficients being the characteristic function. And then we can use, we can define a mean state of low called M low. So, so the M low is also characterized by its characteristic function. But the characteristic function of M low uh, depends on the characteristic function of low. Uh, how does it depend? So, so, so the characteristic function of M low on the point AB, uh, the, its value is equal to characteristic function of low if the absolute value of chi low at that point is equal to one. Otherwise, we take zero. <clears throat> so um, M low is just the mean state low. So why do we care about this state? Uh, because, uh, so we have the, the set of stabilizer states and for any given states, we usually care about like which state uh, w w which state is the closest state to the given state law? So w which stabilized state is the closest state to the given state law? But here we consider distance measure defined by relative entropy. So we consider the relative entropy as the distance measure. So here's the, the mathematical definition of relative entropy. And uh, so we are wondering which uh, state is the closest state in the, uh, to the given state. A closest stabilized state to the given uh, state low with respect to the relative entropy uh, distance. Okay, then we find that. So, so the distance of the given state to the set of stabilized states um, this, mean, uh, this distance is taken when sigma is uh, m real. So the mean state is just the, the closest uh, State, the closest stabilized state to the given quantum state low with respect to uh, the relative entropy distance. Okay, uh, but later I will also show this is not only the closest state to the given uh, quantum state low with respect to relative entropy, but also it is the limit state. So, which means in the quantum central limit theorem, if we repeat the convolution again, 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 it will converge uh, to the M low. Okay, if, besides the, uh, the mean state, we also needed to define another concept called a magic gap. So given quantum state low, the magic gap of low is just defined as the distance between the largest absolute value of the characteristic function of low, and the second largest absolute value. Uh, 
of Kylo on its spot. So the, the, the gap, the magic gap, it just defined the difference between the largest absolute value and the second largest, second largest absolute value of the characteristic function of flow. This is quite similar to the, like the spatial gap for the graph theory or the, for the Hamiltonian. <clears throat> and this magic gap has many interesting properties. First one, the magic gap is always taking value between zero and one. And the when it is equal to zero, if and only if it is stabilized state, or means low equal to M low. And the, the magic gap is invariant on the Clifford unitary, which means if we have the conjugate action of a Clifford unitary, then, then the magic gap is fixed, uh, is invariant. <clears throat> for any Clifford unitary. So these two beautiful properties guaranteed us that this magic gap could be used as the measure to quantify the amount of magic in the uh, state. But here we will use it to, to bound the rate of convergence in the quantum central limit theorem. Okay, now we are basically to, ready to give the formal definition. Of a quantum central limit theorem. So if low, so given any low is zero mean, zero means means um, the, the corresponding characteristic function of the mean state M low is either, is either taking value, is taking value either, uh, taking value either zero or one. Then the distance between the nth convolution of the given state uh, to the mean state is bounded by the one minus mg low to the power of n times low minus m low. So because mg low is taking value from zero one, so one minus mg low also is also between zero and one. So this and the it to take the n's power, so this one is an exponentially small number with respect to n. So which means the, 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 the convergence is very fast. Okay, so this is our uh, formal definition of consensual limit theory and the third property we want to verify. So the last one is we also wonder, now we are considering the, the convolution nth convolution of the given state, the entropy, the volume entropy of the nth convolution of the uh, given state, and also n plus one uh, convolution of the given state. So we want to see what's the relationship between uh, these two entropy. So S is the volume entropy, which is defined as minus three slow log low. And then we find that, uh, the the entropy, the volume entropy of the state is also monotone and um, monotone increasing on the quantum convolution, just like the classic case. Okay, so we also have the monotonicity. Of the quantum entropy. And our quantum convolution. Okay, these four beautiful properties um, convince us that our definition of quantum convolution is a good definition of quantum convolutions. And uh, we use this quantum convolution to study the properties of stabilizingness and the magicness of the quantum states. And then finally, we give the quantum uh, central limit theorem where the limit is also a stabilized state. So this is basically what I want to uh, talk in uh, today. And uh, 
uh, yeah, um, and the, the take home home message is, um, so in this, uh, in our new work, we define new quantum convolution on NQD systems, and uh, we can use it to, stay, uh, to study stabilizer states and the magic, magicness of the states, and also establish a new quantum central limit theory, which will converge to a stabilized state. And uh, also, in fact, in our paper, we also uh, compare our results on NQD system and the previous convolution on the continuous variable system. And we found this year very similar structure. So basically our work could also be regarded as the first step to unify uh, discrete variable quantum information and the continuous variable information. And also we are recently have new progress on finding new applications uh, using these quantum convolutions. And uh, yeah, okay. So that's all I would like to talk today. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kai Feng, for a very beautiful talk. <clears throat> thank you, Arthur. And now I will stop this screen sharing. And uh, if we have the discussion, it would be great if people could turn on their video to talk face to face to each other. So who would like to give the first question or comment? Well, if nobody wants to say anything, maybe I could ask. Uh, Arthur, maybe I can, uh, I can ask a question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for this very beautiful talk. And what I didn't understand is that, so you showed, you mentioned the stabilizer states can be, uh, uh, can be efficiently, the computation with stabilizer states and Clifford, Clifford unitaries can be efficiently uh, uh, sim uh, simulated by classical computers, right? Yes. <clears throat> Is it the largest class of such states? Are there oh. other can expand oh. this? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. So uh, in, talks, in this talk, I introduced the goldsman Kneel theorem, which creates uh, like the, the set of stabilized states with Clifford unitary can be simulated efficiently on a classical computer. Um, this is called stabilized circuit. This, uh, this is one family of tractable quantum circuits. There's another family called a match gate. Uh, basically, uh, in physics, you can call it a fluid fermion. So it's generated by the unitary, has, which has Hamiltonian of quadratic polynomials in the generators of fermions. This is another family. Hmm. Yeah, this is not okay. unique. Even in the, uh, the so, but the, the, the set of uh, stabilized states and the set of uh, magic gates are the only uh, known two families which are tractable on a classical computer. But uh, even in the set of uh, stabilized states, this is not uh, the biggest one. So you can put uh, some uh, T gates in, in it. It is not a Clifford anymore, but uh, also not stabilized anymore, but uh, if the number of T gates is not in, not big enough, it still can be simulated efficiently. It depends on like uh, how big the the the, the T gates, how, how much, how many T gates uh, in the circuit. For example, the number of circuits is T. So usually, what do we have now? The the the, the bound is like two to the power. The classic simulation time is polynomial n times two to the power of T. T is number of T gates. So if T is like log n then it is still a polynomial. You can still simulate the, this kind of concert in polynomial time, but it is beyond the um, uh, stabilizer circuits. Right. So the magic states are not necessarily magic, right? So in yeah. the sense, yeah. magic states not necessarily would give you quantum advantage. Yeah, so you, that's the reason we want to quantify it. We want to know which one is more far away. So yeah, if it's not so far away, it still can be okay, so gap, gap might give you gap. So in other words, you have a threshold in a gap, which tells you if the gap is larger than this threshold, then yeah. this, this is not simulated. Yeah. Is it, is it, do I understand you correctly? 
yes the, yes yeah the, but we don't know where the phase phase transition in the gap yes yeah there's a phase transition of the like a like a computational complexity yeah but okay. we, we don't know what's this right yeah as, to, to the best of my knowledge okay thank you very much yeah Cameron, you have a question? Yeah, I was just um, wondering about the definition of the mean state. So I you, you basically you take the characteristic function and then you kind of delete the the value yeah, yeah. when it's more uh, less than one. But yes. how, so how how does that work for like just thinking on the block sphere for a qubit? Uh, uh, yeah. I'm just a, or sorry. Yeah, I think for qubit, for example, t uh, for the t state, so the mean state is just the, the maximum mixed state the identity. Yeah. So is it? But it, then it would be that any state in the block sphere that is not a stabilizer is the maximally mixed state. We are the mean state of any. Uh, for single qubit case, I think so. Yeah. Uh, because it was strictly less than one. Um, but then... but that is because uh, the mean state is some limit. Um, it's some like uh, somehow like uh, you take the uh, nth power and it goes to infinity. It is somehow corresponding to rank. So that's the reason it is so uh, like uh, so strong, look like yeah. so strong. But I was also then one because uh, when you talk about, I, I, but I can't remember, maybe there was something about that it doesn't work for qubits. But when you then talk about the relative entropy, you say that it's minimized um how is it <laughs> the relative entropy is minimized by the when choosing the mean state but is that that i can that be right for qubits because i'm just imagining if you take something like uh the yeah. some stabilizer oh. state it inside like mixed stabilizer state then it would say that the mean state is the maximally mixed state yeah, but because then, yeah, because for pure state, uh, if you to get to guarantee the the entropy, right entropy to be fine, uh, well defined, you know the right entropy should be well defined when the spot of low is contain the spot of sigma. If it's a pure state, then you cannot contain it. You know that's the trick. So if I have a pure okay. pure bit of state, if you want to have another pure state, uh, there's no pure state that uh, such that the spot of the previous one okay, is contained. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, so the for sure state the right entropy is infinite. Right. Okay. That's the reason why you're yeah. using maximum mixed state. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So close. Well, thanks for the nice talk. So I'm coming now more from my questions come more from the direction of uh, um, central limit theorems, especially non commutative central limit theorems in connection with the uh, distribution of symmetries and invariance principles. So the first thing is <clears throat> uh, when you have this mean state. Could you characterize this? So you see, whenever you carry out a central limit um, 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 uh, uh, procedure, then you need um, uh, to do a, 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 a scaling that uh, you get a proper scaling so that that uh, the limit exists, yeah, in a distributional sense. One is this uh, one over square root of n when you sum up the random variables, but then mm -hmm. then you have to do the centering. In the centering, um, um, uh, that's um, uh, more strictly speaking that what, what you center against this is essentially uh, you have to correct according to the law of large numbers. So uh, your mean state, can you obtain that or characterize that also as um, uh, through a law of large numbers? Oh, you mean like the concentration inequality? Like you have yeah. a better bound? Yeah, the, the, the mean, yeah. The, the, yeah, mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, we're still thinking about it. We, we don't know if we can have more stronger inequality like the like the concentration inequality, uh, this kind of things, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. And uh, the other question is that, um, so in, a, in classical probability theory, um, uh, whenever you look um, uh, um, there at an IID sequence, yeah, clearly this IID sequence is uh, the example of an exchangeable sequence. Oh yeah, and uh, and so um, uh, uh, what kind of um, um, uh, distributional um, invariance principle uh, do you have um, uh, uh, present in uh, uh, in your situ situation? And could you also take um, uh, this um, uh, 
uh, uh, inference principle um, um, as a starting point, and then uh, um, uh, uh, get uh, from there to the uh, to a conditioned, possibly conditioned version of uh, uh, your quantum CLT. Uh, um, so we have a, a like a, so basically the quantum convolution we define as a quantum channel. So if you have additional system, you can define a conditional convolution on the system. But what, what if you are uh, yeah? So you can do the conditional version. Uh, uh, with some additional environment. Uh, this can be done. Uh, we have some currently ongoing work on this. Uh, you can still have the entropy in quality, this kind of things. And uh, But I think you're also interested in like the how is the rate the symmetry, especially like the definite theorem. Yeah, uh, yeah this is a very good question, uh, but I haven't think about the sort of thing, thing in the carefully. Uh, maybe you can have more discussion uh, in private. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Klaus. Are there any other comments or questions? Oh, let me make a comment here. I forgot to mention. Sorry. Uh, so, so here uh, we, we use the, the characteristic function as the quantum Fourier transform. And uh, we use it to study quantum information and quantum computation. And the people use it to do some framework on quantum Boolean functions. But in fact, there's a more general framework of quantum Boolean yeah. analysis, which was introduced by Chen Wei Liu and the uh, uh, Jin Song Wu and the uh, Chen Lanjiang and also Arthur and the uh, Yun Xiang Ren. I think this will be a more general framework to study quantum influences and this kind of things. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I sorry, yeah. I, I, I forgot to mention in the talk. So Kai Feng, maybe you could say a few words about what you're thinking on application. Oh, yeah. So um, currently uh, in this talk, I will talk about uh, um, my uh, the other results, uh, like the mathematical result, the, the mathematical properties, uh, like the 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 environment, uh, the the quantum Fourier transform will, will make the convolution to a multiplication, and the convolution of a stabilized state is a still stabilized state, and also the quantum central limit theory seems. But uh, we have some ongoing work to show the 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 application of quantum convolution, and uh, it will have. Uh, you connect some very interesting connection to the theoretical computer science, like the uh, allocrine code, the uh, uh, the PCP, uh, the quantum PCP conjecture, and also quantum allocrine code and the circuit complexity. Yeah, this is something we are doing, and uh, I think uh, if everything is successful, we have a new work coming uh, out in the next month, uh, in the next three or four weeks. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, Arthur, you mute yourself. Thank you. That's beautiful, Kai Peng. And if there are no other comments, then I'd like to call the session to a close. And we look forward in the fall to seeing. Hi, Arthur. Oh. Uh, Arthur and Kevin, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it's a very beautiful, nice talk, and I'm very interested in the key unitary. So, um, how do you find the key unitary to make the quantum convolution has so many good pro uh, properties, such as quantum um, entropic inequality? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a very good question, and we spend a lot of time on construction on the construction of this unitary. Uh, it's based on the the simplex structure of a Clifford unitary, and uh, basically we, we 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 like assume we some we should have some good properties of this convolution. Then we uh, construct it, tried many ways to construct this uh, unitary such that it satisfies this condition. Somehow it's it's, uh, it's very simple. You can see it, it's just like a two qubit unitary and uh, a two qubit unitary and do the transport product. Um, but we spend uh, lots of time on the construction. I, I, uh, in, in our paper, we give a general uh, way to define this. Uh, this we call the, param the parameter mat matrix G, and uh, we. Ask what kind of G, the, what what kind of properties the, the G should satisfy to make the properties uh, of the convolution, like the entropy inequality, visual information inequality, the central limit theorem, to work. 
we give we, we make some classification like what kind of condition yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it turns out to be just a generalization of rotation or boost yeah yeah, yeah. We'll, this idea from the continuous variable case that's the reason i call the the, the, the example i give here i call it this quite beam splitter because they share a very similar structure as the continuous variable beam, uh, beam splitter. And in continuous variable case, there's another convolution similar to the uh, beam splitter called the uh, amplifier. We also have the discrete version of amplifier. So yeah, so um, basically we get many idea from the uh, continuous one and we define the, uh, try many ways to define the prop uh, discrete version. So that's the reason I say we make a step to unify the uh, uh, discrete variable quantum information and the continuous variable quantum information because they share a very similar structure. Yeah. And uh, what, about, what I'm trying to do is to, but currently we can only do clinical unitary and Gaussian, but uh, we're trying to like unify the, the unitary outside of Gaussian the clinical. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any other comments? So if not, I call to the end of this session and we look forward in the fall to seeing you again. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs>